the Storybooks Games podcast. In today's episode, I will be showing you a couple finished objects, a little bit more information about this hand spun shawl, a couple finished pairs of kids socks, as well as updates on my works in progress, some sewing updates, and other general making chatter. Thank you to everyone who's taking the time to watch this. I found knitting podcasts about a year ago and uh, I really have found it both kind of inspiring and motivating to see what other people are working on and kind of the progress they're making. So I really hope that you find the same from this as well. You can find me here or on Instagram as at storybookscanes and um, yeah, I live in small town Saskatchewan with my husband and our two kids and so I'm kind of, I do social work by day and uh, knitting by night it seems and I just really look forward to being able to make things kind of at the end of the day and on the weekends and now to be able to share it with all of you. <laughs> Let me jump in with some of my finished objects this week. The first is this hand spun shawl. I showed kind of my progress on it last week and if you saw that episode you'll recall that um, this isn't based on a pattern, I was kind of just making it up as I went. It was really that sort of uh, DIY project where I had the wool, which was a 22 micron burrito wool, 200 grams, that I dyed it and spun it and then kind of have just been designing the pattern and knitting it as I go. And uh, I'll take it off here to show, but I went ahead, it's just a basic asymmetric triangle. I started off with a really simple basket weave. Um, just something that's simple to be able to show off the hand spun and as it got larger and larger I wasn't sure where I was going but I ended up just putting on this uh, lattice cable edging on it so that it's just a little bit of something different when it's on. So yeah this is just super, the wool was so fluffy and soft and it's made into such a nice soft uh, shawl that I know I'm going to be able to wear it a lot especially this winter. The next item I finished was a pair of tube socks for my three-year-old. This is some yarn that I dyed and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it because the stripe repeats were fairly short and so for an adult size sock it would be pretty much like a one row re or uh, one row stripe change but for, uh, for these narrower socks they made just a more typical sort of self-striping pattern on that. Um, I uh, was doing these at work so I wasn't sure when to put the heel in so I decided I'd just knit the tube and if they weren't going to work as tube socks I could put in an afterthought heel um, after the fact. However, um, I, they've already been worn, they seem to be wearing well and staying up no problem and so this way it'll kind of be able to, they'll be able to be worn longer especially for little feet that are always growing. So I finished off this pair, like I said I was knitting them at work when I had a minute or was on the phone or something and uh, so I brought them home and my daughter put them on and then her little younger brother who's a year and a half was asking for socks socks or ox ox as he says um, and probably any socks would have sufficed but I took that as a sign that I should knit him a pair as well and so these are even smaller yet but just another pair of tube socks if you watched last, uh, my last episode, you may recall I had made a pair of socks for myself using this yarn and so it's just kind of the perfect use of a few scraps um, because yeah, it just really doesn't take all that much yarn. And so I went ahead and didn't stick a heel in these either, uh, thinking I can always put it in after if I want to, but if not they'll be able to kind of be worn for an extended period of time um, just because as feet grow they will continue to fit. So that's pretty uh, nice way to get a couple pairs done even though uh, they're not you know not as time consuming as adult size socks. So I had dyed up um, some extras, a couple I had sold, I do have one left and that's actually one I had the practice colorway on so that's actually my, my work, next work in progress. Keep it here before it runs away on me. Alright so this is the pair that I have I, I'm working on, it's in progress right now. It's um, yeah, all sorts of speckles with some pinks and purple speckles going into these sea foam and almost to a red emerald color that's striping, just a gradient transitional stripe sort of thing. Um, I'm pairing it with a uh, tonal gray. That's the balls here. So here's the tonal gray and um, I'm gonna use that for the heels as well. And then the striping yarn I'm using. I'm almost to the point of putting in the heel. I've got a little bit more to knit on those and then I can pop the heel in, go up the leg. And yeah, I'm really happy with how they're turning out. 
So I had dyed that one and I thought, oh, I bet I can make it just a little more interesting. So this is the next colorway I dyed, which has the same sort of tones, but it ends with this, um, this really vibrant purple stripe. This color I named Dolphin Finds a Star based on the book, Children's Book of the Same Name, where a dolphin goes and finds a mermaid and it's all in these really pretty colors. It's all in these really pretty colors. So I went ahead and did up a swatch of that just to see how it compared um, to the other one that I had that I was knitting. And so it's really similar. It just has, like I said, that, that purple stripe on, you know, in the repeat. I'm really happy with that colorway and it definitely reminds me of that kind of mermaid and dolphin theme. <laughs> my other work in progress right now is my risen sweater. I showed this last week as well. I'm using some more yarn that I dyed. I mentioned this before, but it's kind of a, I was going for a denim type of feel, something that could be a perfect everyday sweater, could wear um, with anything. So the pattern is Risen. It's called Risen by Melanie Berg. It's an open face cardigan with a, a textured collar all the way around and about a half to three quarter length sleeve. And so I am at presently just below, below the sleeve. So last week I think I was, I hadn't split for the sleeve yet, so I've done a little bit of progress, like I said, it was two weeks ago now. So I made a bit of progress on that. I just finished the waist decreases, and now I need to continue knitting a bit before we increase for the hip shaping. So I mean, it's, I'm making progress, but it is a fingering weight sweater, so it's slow progress. Um, but it's really fun to work on and just be able to pick up and kind of go back and forth and yeah, it's one of those things that I think is going to be really worthwhile. Makes such a nice fabric. Um, it's at a bit of a looser gauge. I'm using a size 5 Chiavi needle. And um, yeah, so it's a little bit looser. However, I think it's going to be nice and kind of drapey and flowy and will be a good everyday sort of um, layer for the top. So that's really all I have on the go right now. I want to make some progress on both of those um, projects in the next couple weeks. But I've got one more that I picked up the yarn for, and so it's actually, I'm just going to do it out of this acrylic. It is uh, called Wool Lake. It's from Michaels. I've knit some other things out of this before, and it's really surprisingly soft. Um, and yeah, it is acrylic, but it's for a kid's sweater. I'm going to be, my plan is to make a Christmas sweater for my daughter out of this. Um, I'm not exactly sure which pattern to go with. I'm thinking I'm going to use, um, what's it called, Prairie Prairie Fire or Prairie Fire Rising by Tin Can Knits. That's kind of um, what I've got in mind so far. And it's a really nice, um, it looks like a raglan sweater with some texture down the front. And so maybe it'll go with a little skirt or something for a Christmas outfit. This colorway is called Mauve, although it looks kind of more like a burgundy sort of thing to me. Um, and if I do go with that Tin Can Knits pattern, it's DK, and this is a light fingering, so I think I'll just hold it double, and uh, yeah, if I go ahead with that pattern. I think it'll work too, because this makes such a fine, thin fabric that it might not be warm enough anyways. So uh, that's kind of the plan so far, and I'm thinking I'll probably get it cast on in the next couple weeks, so you can watch for some progress on that. One last kind of knitting related thing I'm really excited about, or rather more dyeing related, is that my husband is making me a warping mail. So in the past I've done some weaving and I had a warping board, but I had passed that on to a friend when we moved because it was so large and I didn't know if I'd use it again. Well now that I've been doing the self-striping yarn, I've really been wishing for it, but thinking that maybe um, a warping, either wheel or mill, would be more practical. So I kind of showed some ideas to my husband and he went ahead and started building one for me. All right, so that's pretty much all I have to share uh, knitting wise with you today. I did want to show this uh, sort of tunic dress I'm wearing. I had sewn it up just last night. It is using, um, I'll take my scarf off, some cotton lycra that I had picked up like probably more than two years ago. I I can't recall, I believe this one was from Girl Charlie, which I haven't had the best luck with with uh, quality. However, this solid is a really nice, it's fairly thick and it's, I've made a shirt out of this before um, and it's held up really well. A lot better than the contrasting fabric I used, which was from the same place, but just really thin and kind of flimsy. I made this last night and um, take a look. 
I used the shirt I had on hand, uh, just laid it on top of the fabric to kind of cut around and then lengthened it, thinking that it would be a really nice, comfortable tunic top sort of thing I could wear with leggings, um, especially around the house or whatever. Um, but the hem, I tried to do a high-low hem, however, hemming it was a bit of a nightmare and it, yeah, it didn't work out so well, so I ended up just kind of cutting it and leaving it raw and it's just kind of rolled up a little bit and for now I'm going to leave it like that and maybe bring it again at some point uh, in the future, but for now it'll work okay, I think. I really haven't sewn anything in what feels like forever. I was telling um, my husband last night that I think it's kind of proportional to the age of children in the house and when there's a baby, like under one especially, there are just so many interruptions, it is really hard to finish a project start to finish, at least in my experience, and I don't do well with all the interruptions. Um, I feel like I lose my train of thought and then I don't finish what I'm working on very well, and it's just, it becomes more frustrating than anything. So I'm really happy to have uh, at least done this much and uh, made this one, and yeah, I look forward to doing some more sewing. It was a little bit fun and it was mostly fun and a little bit frustrating just with that hem but I don't think it's frustrating enough to totally throw in the towel if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I've sewn through most of the fabric I have so I might need to pick up some more um, just to make myself a few more tops or something. I think that would be um, yeah, a really fun addition and uh, I'm pretty, like I said, happy with how this turned out and probably would be even better if I used a pattern next time so I might need to look into doing that in the future. So the last thing I wanted to chat about briefly, um, I was thinking about doing, like I know some people do um, like books they've been reading or just other favorite sort of things. And so I thought for this week I would mention um, just some of the audiobooks and audio podcasts I've been listening to um, just because right now I'm driving at least an hour a day um, and so audiobooks and audio podcasts have been really good for the commute and, uh, and yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. So I've been using the Hoopla app, which connects to my library and gives me a pretty wide selection of audiobooks. And so right now, so right now I have been listening to the book entitled Jesus by Marcus C. Borg. He is a scholar, an academic kind of guy who uh, has spent, it sounds like, probably 40 years studying Jesus and um, and yeah, it's kind of a really in-depth study, kind of biography style, uh, but it really looks at all sorts of historical documents and what they say about Jesus and his life, um, both biblical and not, and just kind of comparing them and putting them together and looking at different ways that we understand uh, the life of Jesus. And so I've really been enjoying it, mostly because it uh, kind of... I've been really enjoying how much it's its just kind of more of a challenging language, it's more of an academic read, um, but just on a topic I find interesting, and it gives more of a broader look than say like a Christian literature, I don't know, traditional sort of read through, we're only looking at the biblical studies. And so that is something I have been enjoying, however it is a little bit of a heavier topic and requires a little bit more concentration. Requires a little bit more concentration. So on days when I my brain's not quite at that speed, there are some audio podcasts that I have been enjoying. Okay, both of these podcasts are faith-based, which may or may not be of interest to you. The first of which is called At Home with Sally. And Sally Clarkson is an author yeah. who's written a lot of different yeah. books. A lot of them have been on motherhood or um, raising children, things like that. And At Home with Sally kind of studies, um, or it's just conversations with that author, and sometimes she interviews other people as well. And so right now they've been going through some of her newer books, and she's just been kind of telling stories about her life and, um, and just some sharing ideas. And anyways, it's something to look up if you are interested in some of that uh, mothering type <laughs> information, I guess. Faith-based mothering, at least. The other one that is I've been listening to is The Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey. I've listened to this on and off for a long time, um, but she does weekly interviews with different Christian women. Um, it's just really, I find it also kind of inspiring to hear what people are doing and um, like some of these women are CEOs running companies or some of them are overseas doing um, different types of work and just being able to see um, what all these different people are up to and it's just really, it's a broad, 
it's a really broad look, but it results in kind of these intimate conversations that is really interesting to listen to. So I recommend checking those out if you are interested in finding some new audio podcasts. All right, well, that is all I have to share with you today. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. I'm hoping to get another episode up in two weeks from now. Um, I've already done some Christmas knitting, so I'm not sure I'm going to jump in with a whole bunch of that. Although Christmas is coming, so maybe there will be some more. I'm not exactly sure at this point. Um, but have a good couple weeks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye.